Hey, it's Lucas. Welcome back to the Chan Chan. 2004 was known as the year of sequels. The top two movies that year were Shrek 2 and Spider-Man 2. Even Meet the Fockers was a sequel, and that was also in the top five. But somebody, thank the Lord, brought originality in 2004. That somebody was Lindsay Lohan. Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen. Not a sequel, babe, but it is based on a book. I don't know if that takes anything away, but it wasn't a sequel. She was the only girly doing it right in 2004. We're gonna be discussing this timeless film today. And if I remember correctly, it's basically all about a narcissistic pathological liar high schooler who ends up getting everything she wants. She scams her way through life and it works. It really formed me as an 11 year old. Also, it had a theme song. Lindsay Lohan went to the studio and made a smash. That song is good. Before we get into the movie, I do have to address the obvious drama. Hilary Duff was offered the lead role. I just had to point it out. This was also around the same era that Lindsay and Hillary were both fighting over Aaron Carter. They were also fighting over movie roles, sis. Hilary Duff, I guess, denied the role. It ended up going to Lindsay Lohan. And as a viewer, gotta say I'm thankful. I can't imagine this movie with Lizzie McGuire in it. It was meant to be that Lindsay got the role. It was written in the stars. It was fate if you will. The movie starts out, we're in glamorous New York City where Lindsay's all rich and her rich mom is saying goodbye to her in a rich limo with like two rich twins also there. It seems that Lindsay is gonna be staying in NYC all alone with her early 2000s Louis Vuitton bag. And then for some unknown reason, Lindsay does this. Yes, I'm free. I can live in New York on my own. I can do whatever I want. Like, okay, maybe join the Olympic gymnast team. Like, come on now, don't save those moves for the street, join a competition. Lindsay can do it all. She can act, she can sing, she can dance, she can flip, she can twirl. And don't even try to say that flip was edited. I know the haters out there are already typing the comment. It wasn't, that wasn't movie magic. Case closed, move on. Except the fact that Lindsay can twirl and flip and dance and act and sing. You're a hater. We find out pretty early in the movie that Lindsay's character is indeed a pathological liar. Iconic. She's super delusional and I guess her family's moving to New Jersey. And she's like, ew, never. I'm an NYC babe. I am not going to Jersey Shore with Snooki. She's super distraught that she's gonna have to leave the Big Apple. Don't be such a drama queen. Wait, they just called her a drama queen and the movie's called Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen. I love when they do stuff like that. They said the movie title. That would have been me at 11 years old watching this in the movie theater. That's the title of the movie. Did you hear that? My name from this day forward is Lola. You know, I've known since I was five years old that my true name is Lola. You were named Mary. It is the name on your birth certificate. Lindsay's character is named something boring, like Lauren. I don't know. No hate to Lauren's out there. But she now is referring to herself as Lola. It's just a drama queen thing that change your name. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I did go through a stage where I wanted to be referred to as LC. I thought it fit me more than Lucas. I still kind of do think that it never caught on. I tried to make it a thing. It's okay. I'm still LC on the inside. Goodbye any chance of becoming a famous actress. I remember thinking that exact same thing when I got the part of Guard 2 in Aladdin Jr. when I was 12. I thought all the dreams I had of being a famous actress were over. They weren't. I ended up guest starring in Super Ninjas. Yes, I did just mention that I was in an episode of Super Ninjas. So yeah, if you're watching and you got guard number two in your local production of Aladdin Jr., just know it's not the end. Not even close. Can we just talk about Lola's outfit for a second? I know movies have wardrobe stylists, but I'm just gonna pretend that Lindsay Lohan was the stylist for this movie. She picked that outfit. Like, don't even try to tell me different. There wasn't a wardrobe person. It was all Lins. Classic Lins. Gosh, I love her. We learned that Lola is a stan of Stu Wolf. He's like a Harry Styles type person, I guess. His music, or poetry rather, gets Lola through the darkest moments of her life. I just wanted to point that out because it becomes important later in the movie. Another bop of an outfit. You go, girl. This right here is Lola's best friend slash sidekick for the rest of the movie. So get used to her. In the early 2000s, the sidekick character just has to be very basic. Sort of just a bouncing board for the lead chic character to, I don't know, sometimes express themselves to. They really have no purpose. They're just a side character. And this is this movie's side character. We love. Hi. 
Have you ever seen Sartre in person? No, but I think Stuolf is the greatest poet since Shakespeare. This is him getting into his limo. That black spot right there, that's his head. She also stands the Harry Styles guy and they're bonding over it pretty hard. But then Megan Fox, the school's mean girl, walks in as some early 2000s hit is playing. I'm not gonna play the song because I don't wanna get copyrighted, but every time Megan Fox enters this movie, they play the same song. It's that one early 2000s song that goes, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. What is that song? I tried Googling it. I literally Googled uh-oh lyrics. I can't find it. What is that song? And what about those glasses? They are so 10 minutes ago, but I'm gonna stop myself before I get nasty. I gotta say, calling something so 10 minutes ago, it's a vibe. I know Megan Fox is playing like a middle school bully in this, but I'm gonna bring that to my 28 year old life. I'm gonna start saying things are so 10 minutes ago. Everyone is gonna be so wowed when I bring that line out. I wish Megan Fox was my high school's bully. I would have purposely gone out of my way to get bullied by her. I would let Megan Fox drag me by my non-existent hair down a gravel road while it was hailing outside. I said it. Next up in the movie, for some reason, Lola checks out some guy's ass. I couldn't possibly have a boyfriend. I mean, I have to focus on my acting career. Not only is Lola a pathological liar, she also objectifies people. Ugh, more pathological lying coming right up. Lola is now telling her basic sidekick person complete lies about her parents. Like she's just lying about, oh, my dad was in this band or something. She's just making up straight up fables about her family's origin story. And I gotta say it's iconic. Like there was no real reason to lie that hard, but she did. She doesn't just lie a little bit, a little white lie here and there. She full on makes up intricate backstories that are easily disproven, legendary. The funny thing is her dad's alive, but she told her new friend that he died a horrible death in a motorcycle accident to gain sympathy. Iconic. We've already established Lola wants to be a famous actress. Well, she overhears Megan Fox being like, yeah, I'm gonna get the lead role in the play. Not on Lola's watch. After hearing that, Lola literally chooses violence and almost murders about a dozen girls in the locker room. Like, thank God those lockers stopped falling. She would have killed them all, paralyzed a few. She is ruthless. Go Lola. She was about to kill for the lead role in the school play. And you know what? When you have a dream, you gotta... You shouldn't kill anyone for your dream. I love how nobody's allowed to have aspirations besides Lola. Like she hears that Megan Fox also has a dream of being an actress. Uh-uh, I'm gonna kill you is what Lola thought. Ugh, we love our main character. We're now at the play auditions and Lola is singing her little heart out. It's completely acapella. And I don't know if they worked some magic in the studio, but Lindsay's voice sounds great. Like it even has some like rough textures that are just so soothing. Lindsay, get back into music now. Her audition ends up going great and let's hope nobody else auditions or she'll kill them. The cast list has been posted. Is Lola gonna get the lead? Megan Fox and Lola are both like racing to read the cast list. They keep making obstacles for each other so like the other one can't read the cast list. Lola literally ruins school property that was paid for with innocent civilians taxpayer money. That's great. Yeah, just rip up everything, Lola, so you can get to the cast list first. I'm so confused. Why is this such an intense race to read the cast list? It's not like the first person to get to the cast list gets the lead. Even if you read the cast list, 30 minutes after it's posted. If you're the lead, you're still the lead. Why are they doing this? It's gonna be okay. It gives the same energy of those people who stand up when the plane lands. Like they immediately stand up. It's like the door hasn't even opened yet to the effing front of the plane. Why are you standing in the aisle? God, you're making me feel claustrophobic. There's too many people standing. Get, sit down. I'm your new Eliza. <laughs> Of course, Lola gets the lead and her sidekick is all excited. Like, why was the sidekick even there? Megan Fox didn't get the lead role, which further intensifies the feud between her and Lola. I don't know if you guys remember this part of the movie if you've watched it before, but when I was 11, this was the coolest part of the movie to me. Megan Fox and Lola have a DDR dance battle. Are you kidding me? And they go so hard. Do you guys remember DDR? Ugh, so fun. Oh, 
Okay, I gotta give it to Megan. That move was pretty lit. Marsh Warman bought a piece from her last summer. And Marshy, as I call him, is their manager. I know who he is. We're in the middle of an intense DDR dance battle, but Lola isn't gonna waste this time. While she's dancing, she's simultaneously compulsive lying to Megan Fox. <laughs> Again, for no reason. There's not a reason to lie to make up many a fake story, but Lola's gonna do it anyway. She's lying to Megan Fox being like, yeah, my mom knows the Harry Styles guy or whatever. It's complete lies. Legendary. She simply can't stop making stuff up. The dancing is getting more and more intense. Lola like jumps up on a rail and does these sick ass moves and of course she ends up winning. Her little BFF sidekick is clapping from the sidelines. I want to sit down the sidekick and be like, girly, you didn't win. Lola did. Like, why are you living through her so hard? You were so excited when she got the lead role. Now you're like, oh my god, she won the DDR battle. Girl, it's time to start looking inward. Figure something out for your own identity. If only all of us had an early 2000s movie sidekick to cheer us on through life while we gave them nothing in return. We can only wish. Why did you tell Carlo that we were invited to his party? You would have done the exact same thing if you were me. <laughs> I wouldn't have lied. I would have thought before I spoke. I, I can't even imagine being you. The sidekick finally offers something of value. She's challenging Lola being like, why did you lie to Megan Fox? That wasn't needed. But of course, Lola doesn't listen. She's like, I'm gonna lie. And I'm gonna lie a lot. And that's something you should know about me. I'm a liar. I lie. Megan Fox's squad is really giving. The coach bags, the plaid. I mean, if you're gonna be a bully, it does hurt a little bit less if you're pretty and are wearing good fashions. Like if, imagine if someone's being so mean to you and they just look like a slob, you'd feel even worse. But if they're wearing plaid, if they've got a coach bag, you start to feel a little bit better about getting horrendously bullied by them. Megan Fox is like, hey, I got VIP tickets to see Harry Styles. The bang bitch, where are your tickets? I thought your mom was all buddy buddy with Harry Styles. Lindsay continues to dig herself deeper into her huge mountain of lies. She could have came clean, it would have been embarrassing, but she continues to dig the grave deeper. She's claiming they have tickets to see Harry Styles. They're gonna go to his after party. It's all a lie. Don't worry, I have enough for both of us. I swear I'm gonna pay you back the minute, no, the second I get my allowance reinstated. It's okay. And as soon as I get my first starring role, I'm taking you to Europe. The best part is Lola is now scamming the BFF to pay for the tickets. I mean, you gotta give it to Lola. This is her world and she's gonna manipulate anyone, even her closest friend, to get what she wants. <laughs> she's literally Anna Delvey. I bet Anna Delvey was inspired by this movie. This movie single-handedly caused inventing Anna. Don't cry, it's gonna work out and we'll go and it'll be fun. <laughs> I can't lie. <laughs> Yeah, you heard that right. The sidekick literally was crying, I can't lie, because Lola is forcing her to join her lying ways. She's making them lie to their parents about going to NYC to see the concert or whatever. By the end of this movie, the sidekick is also gonna be a narcissistic, pathological, lying sociopath. And I'm excited to witness it. Remember the guy who at the beginning of the movie, Lola was objectifying? He's now stealing from the school because she told him to. She's really good at brainwashing. She needs to start a cult. She's scamming her best friend out of money. She's making her boyfriend steal for her. She has cult leader energy and she should utilize it. That's all I'm saying. Good plan. Maybe we should just go to the hotel. <laughs> what? And miss the concert? Yeah, I don't think so. After all of the scamming and stealing, she didn't even get into the gosh dang Harry Styles guy concert. The sidekick's parents literally gave them cash to buy tickets at the door. Lola lost the cash, AKA probably invested it in Bitcoin or like some NFT or something. So now it literally all was for nothing. And Megan Fox is gonna find out that they don't have tickets and expose Lola's lies and the whole school is gonna hate her. I can't wait. After the concert, they happened to find the Harry Styles guy laying in a literal pile of trash. They end up going to a diner with him, talking to him. He's really drunk. I have so much to ask you about your work. It's impossible to talk to someone who's had that much to drink. Wow, if only Megan Fox could see them now. They're literally talking to the Harry Styles guy. She'd be so jealous. They end up getting arrested because the Harry Styles guy is so drunk. And the police are like, okay, give us your parents' names. Lola Step, my father's name is Callum Step. 
address is 512 Bleecker Street. Wait, what? Did she just give her dad's name? The one who died in a motorcycle accident? You said your dad died! Now you're giving the police his name as your guardian? You told me your father died in a motorcycle accident. <laughs> so I exaggerated a little. A little? Exaggerating a little is saying you're a little taller. Saying your father is dead when he's not is lying beyond comprehension. You know, can we talk about this later? I mean, don't you think we should tell Stu what happened first? See, this is why you can't be a pathological liar. Eventually, the lies catch up to you. Nobody wants to be around a liar unless they have a yacht, and Lola doesn't have a yacht. So are people gonna put up with her lying? No. The police just let them go off with this adult man. They go to his after party. Megan Fox is nowhere to be seen. Bola's dad is now their chaperone, and he's totally fine with them going up to the rock star's bedroom alone. <sighs> Parenting fail, maybe? Megan Fox ends up seeing them at the after party. So she's super shook because she thought Lola was a pathological liar because Lola is a pathological liar. But now she's like, wait, how did she actually get into this after party? Why do we want to hear what you have to say? Ella and I were there, remember? <gasps> did you hear that? She said they were there. You know, lying's not gonna help you. Everybody already knows that you didn't go. Don't pretend you didn't see us there. I know you did. It just so happens that Ella and I got in because of Stu Wolf himself after he practically saved his life. Megan Fox decided that she's just gonna tell the school that Lola wasn't at the after party. This was 2004, it was before Snapchat, before Instagram. There's literally no proof that Lola was at the party, so Megan Fox can just tell everyone she wasn't. Even though Megan Fox is lying, Lola has lied many more times. So people believe Megan's side of the story even though she is currently lying. So many liars in this movie for kids. I love it. It's giving the message of, if you don't like something that happened in reality, lie about it. Say it's fake news. My dad was there too, and he and Stu are gonna get together sometime. What dad? You don't have a dad. You said he died before you moved here. I mean, what do you do? Do you just make all this up as you go along? Do you think that just because we're not from New York that we're stupid? You know, that's what you are. You're a liar. Your name isn't even Lola, Mary. I think this is the part of the movie where we're supposed to feel bad for Lola or Mary or whatever the F her real name is. But I mean, it's just hard as an audience, you know? I mean, she's been living one big lie. She told her best friend that her dad died when he's alive. Like, that's messed up, honey. And I gotta say, it was fun watching Lola lie for a bit, but then it got to the point where she was literally gonna kill her classmates to get what she wanted. And it's just like, this is karma, bitch. Yes, I did just call a 15 year old character a bitch. I'm not sorry. Lola is trying to redeem herself being like, listen, I did lie, but I actually did meet Harry Styles and we did hang out. And everyone's just like, girl, just stop while you're ahead. Even the teacher's laughing in her face. The teacher straight up looks at Lola and laughs and is like, you are a joke. You're nothing. It's actually very dark. Lola is crying on the couch as that one song plays from the early 2000s. Nothing lasts forever, I'm sorry, I can't be perfect. Which those lyrics don't even match this scene. Like, I'm sorry I can't be perfect. You weren't even trying to be perfect. This should be, I'm sorry that I'm a pathological liar and I got caught. Your narcissism caught up to you, Lola. Or should I say Mary? It's not even your real name. You would think at this point, Lola would have had some character development, been like, okay, it's time to take responsibility for my actions. Nope, she's back to lying. It's the night of the play where she's the lead role and she's faking sick. You know, I really am sick. I mean, ask my mom. I'm not buying it. You're bailing out of the play. Here I am, so sick this could turn into pneumonia and then I'll be on my deathbed and you're being accusatory. You can't do this, Lola. Everyone is depending on you. Lola! Lola step by Eliza. She almost killed a dozen girls to get this role. And now she's faking sick. Just go to the play. Everyone else has been practicing. There's gonna be a whole audience and you're just gonna stand them all up. Lola, get your act together. This sidekick girl ends up doing this whole speech about how amazing Lola is. And of course that strokes Lola's ego. So she's like, okay, I guess I'll get out of bed and do the lead role. Since you just talked for five minutes about how amazing I am. That's all you gotta do to get a sociopath to do what you want to do. Stroke their ego, honey. It's like Taylor Swift said. I never trust a narcissist, but they love me. So I'll play them like a violin. 
and I let them think they saved me. Of course Lola brings the house down. She might be a despicable, horrible, dirty piece of shit, but she is talented. You gotta give her that. And the thing is, at the end of the day, on the stage, that's what counts. It doesn't matter that she's a sociopath. She's the lead character. She's giving a standing ovation worthy performance. That girl was a one way teenage drama queen. Such a bop, like I said before. We're now at the play after party and Megan Fox is fake eating a hot dog, but she is a good actress, so most people wouldn't spot it. I wonder how many takes they did where Megan Fox was like, okay, I'm not actually taking another bite of this hot dog. I don't give a shit. I'm straight up gonna take a fake bite out of this hot dog. No one can tell me otherwise. The Harry Styles rock star man shows up to the after party to hand deliver a necklace to Lola, which I know is supposed to be a cute moment, but it's also like you're an adult man showing up to a 15 year old party. It's giving bad vibes. Also, it makes me mad because now Lola is gonna get the vindication she's been craving. Everyone is gonna see that she wasn't lying. She did hang out with the Harry Styles guy and he's even hand delivering her a necklace. This would be a great ending if Lola had had some character development, but she's still a lying person. But whatever, it all works out for her. Megan Fox then falls into a fountain like a gosh damn a loser. But of course, Lola helps her up because she's such a good person. And I'm calling bullshit. If Harry Styles hadn't showed up to that party, Lola would have watched Megan Fox fall into that fountain and laughed and pointed. But since she's on a high, because the biggest superstar in the world just showed up to the party to say hi to her, she's gonna be all nice to Megan. Like that doesn't mean shit. I bet you even serial killers do nice things for other people after Harry Styles shows up for them, you know? Lola's having a moment with the rock star and of course the sidekick is smiling from the sidelines it's like, girly, get your own life. You're part of a cult. And Lola is the leader. The movie ends with Lola dancing with the man who she objectified earlier in the movie and also manipulated to steal for her. I guess now they're dating. Lola ends up getting everything she wanted. So I guess the lesson for this movie is lie to everyone, fake it till you make it, choose violence, follow strangers into alleys, and you'll get everything you want. Honestly, a good lesson, if I do say so myself. I feel like when people talk about Lindsay Lohan's career, they don't really mention this movie, but they should. And I hope this video convinced you that that's true. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm gonna go be a scammer because apparently that's how you make it in life according to this movie. Bye! <laughs>